I've got another UPS to fix. Looks like it's probably just the batteries. I haven't opened up yet. Power it up. Yeah, percent So it was, was running, it's been plugged in a year and a half, maybe two years, something like that. Just running in the background, just fine. And then it suddenly started shutting off. And because this is a line interactive one, it just runs all the time. It supplements the line voltage, so if the line voltage dips, it'll bring it back up again to the devices that plugged into it and that sort of stuff. So it's a slightly better unit than the standard one, which just switch over to the battery and provide its own supply if it cuts out. So it's a, a better unit. But that obviously means that if the battery goes dead, then it stops working. So I need to open this thing up, let's have a look. So here's the specs on the back here. So it's 230 volt input rated, output 230 volt, maximum 3 amps. That's what you can put out, or 1000 VA. Right, let's get it open. And I expect to find some uh, bulging or broken batteries. That's what I expect to find. It's quite likely. So here's some uh, clues over here. That looks like a leaky battery. You notice on here I put on 11.7 milliohms. That's the resistance I measured on these batteries when I installed them. And yep, there's definitely a lot of leakage going on down there. You can see all the residue inside. So one was definitely failed. They look like 7.2 amp hour ones. I actually don't remember what they are. We'll find out shortly. So it's got uh, this part of the bracket that holds it in. Get these out and they'll free them from the bracket. I'd have to remove to unplug the power from the batteries as well in a second before they actually fall out. This is at least safe, I'm not going to accidentally turn it on and zap myself. Pull this link off. and get these out. Now there's another little strap here I've got to take off. I'll get my little battery tester out and show you how that works. I haven't really shown it. I think I've maybe featured it once. I'm not quite sure. This is a really nice assembly this one. This one's really easy to get the batteries in and out. Probably the best unit I've got for changing the batteries. The other ones you have to sort of take the framing apart and try and you know sometimes you have to take the transformer out and shove it out back so you can get the thing squeezed out. Not very well designed, but this one's actually really good. So, there's one which looks intact. And here's the other one which has leaked, the looks of it. This one feels a bit bulgy. This one is dead flat, apart from the little sink marks on the sides, which are from the molding process of making the casing. So that's normal. But this one's definitely bulgy. It's not as good. So let's measure them, see what's going on. I was thinking I wish I'd put the date on these batteries when I put them in there, because something I started to do recently actually, if I was a year or so I suppose, is put dates on. So I know how long the battery's been inside the unit before it's failed. Anyway, let's see what we get. One here, one there, that one is measuring. Minus 13 volts because I've got it back to front because I'm an idiot. Right, there we go. 30 volts, and this one here is saying 13 volts. Well, they both say they're okay, but we know they're not. So, we need to load test these. So, one of the things I've got here is a little battery ESR tester. I purchased this off an Express a few years ago now, probably two or three years ago. You can measure battery ESR to so give you an idea of what the current carrying capacity is of the battery. Because if you put a load on it, if it's got high ESR, the voltage will just drop. But if it's got a low ACR, it won't. Alright, so this actually comes with like crocodile clip things, well, Kelvin leads, Kelvin clip leads, that's what I'm looking for. And also comes with these pogo pin leads as well, with a couple of spare pins. That's also quite a nice approach of doing things, but in this case, I'm going to use these. Make sure you subscribe if you've not been here before. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Um, if you've liked the video, give us a thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. I tend to remember to say it from time to time. Alright, let's power this up. 
See if the battery is still not flat. Been lasting a while. Let's see what we get. Stick one on here. Stick one on here. So that's measuring 18 ohms. So this is the same test I used on these originally when I did the original test on these. That said 11.7 milli ohms. And it's saying 18 ohms. Let's try this one. Both the same age, both purchased at the same time. It's like I've got a slightly dodgy connection on here, it's not going to go great really. So it's 74 milli ohms. So you can see there's a significant difference between these two batteries. So which one which we think has leaked, it which, you know, based on that. Yeah, you know, 18 ohms, yeah, that's definitely bad. So this one's saying 74 milli ohms. Even this one is significantly worse than its original rating, which is 11.7. What's that, six times worse, pretty much? Six and a half times worse? So it's quite a degradation going on there. I thought I'd fire up my electronic load here. I've got on the better of the two batteries. This is the one which measured 74 milli ohms. I've got it set to one amp current limit. It's sitting at 13.03 volts. We'll turn on the one amp load. And we'll see what happens to the voltage. So it's gone down 12.6, 12.5, dipping quite quickly. It's handling it kind of okay, but not wonderful. One amp's not a big load. You think about this thing when it's trying to actually supply power on the inverter on this thing. It's going to be using a lot more than one amp. It's probably going to be using something like five or ten or maybe twenty amps. Because they don't last that long, they last sort of 20 minutes or so before they go flat. So I do have quite a big draw on them. So if I actually ramp this up a bit, let's go to say 5 amps. We'll see how it handles that. So let's dip down to 7.6 volts. Because I'm on a 5 amp range, I want to do more. Let's change the range. 30 amp range, right. Let's do 10 amps. And it's not doing that badly, really. Right, ten and a half volts, ten amps loading on the battery like this. That's basically a one C discharge rate because it's a this is actually a nine amp hour battery. So, yeah, not too bad. It's not completely dead yet, but it's not far off it. So I've now switched over to the worst of the two batteries, which we believe is completely knackered because it's got a really high resistance on it. And was it eighteen ohms? Was it? I can't remember now. So we'll put a load on. This is like half an amp. Yeah, clean the capacity out because we're not interested in that anyway. And it's already diving down to 11.3 at half an amp. So it's not handling that very well. So let's go to 1 amp. And do it again. That's dived to 9.5 volts. So really not handling the current at all. And we'll do 10 amps as well. Yeah, clean it up. That's all right. And it's dead. Completely killed it. <laughs> Went down to zero volts. Cannot handle that kind of current at all, as expected. So that's a big difference between those two batteries. So the batteries have arrived. So now I can actually finish doing this repair. Well, replacement, I suppose. Battery replacement. Not really a repair, is it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see what state they're in out of the box. So I've, I've actually opened the boxes, but you know I haven't done anything else with them yet. We're going to test them with my tester here, see what the internal resistances of the batteries and their current state of charge, stuff like that, as I've received them. And then I'll charge these up and recheck them after they've been charged. And then we'll fit them into the unit. First thing is, how good are they when you first get them brand new out of a box? Now let's get this one out. Who needs that bit of plastic there? Anyway, Dimec. Now what I've done this time, instead of getting a higher capacity battery, which is what I've always tended to do, the ones I've pulled out with 9 amp hour batteries, I've decided to go for a lower capacity battery of the same physical size. What I'm hoping is that this will mean it's got thicker plates or something like that in there, which means it might actually last longer. This is what I'm going to try out, because I've always gone high capacity, and I've always had issues with battery life. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong there. Maybe I should be looking at lower capacity and hopefully more robust. I don't know. It could be no better. It could be, you know, I'm going to end up having a short battery life and no capacity. I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out. So well, I'll find out in a few years, hopefully. The batteries usually only last me about between, well, it depends on the usage, 
about one and a half to maybe three years, as long as I can get, it's about three years, I think, two and a half years, before they're completely dead. I did this one about three years ago, I think, two and a half, three years ago, when I did it before. Um, and this doesn't have much load on it, so it's, you know, this gets pretty easy life. So we'll see how these go with these different capacities. So these are 6.5 amp hour batteries instead of the 9 amp hours I normally use. So we're going to go anyway. So let's test it so you can see what it comes out like. So 12.8 volts, well 12.82 volts, and 27 milliohm resistance. 27, okay. The set I had in here before, I recorded those as being 11 milliohms. There's already, in theory, three times worse, but they're not charged. So when you charge them up, the internal resistance changes. I did have someone comment in the last video I did about why the um, resistance was higher in the batteries I put in than the ones I took out. Well, it's because they weren't charged. Check the other cell as well. They should be similar, but you never quite know, do you? Could be different batches or whatever. So, 12.87, so slightly better charge state, and the internal resistance is a fraction better. Very similar. So, they both seem to be basically the same condition, which is good. Now, I'm going to charge these up, and I'll redo this test afterwards, and I'll come back. So, as you can see, I've got hooked up my power supply here. I'll set it to 15 volts, which is the maximum these are recommended for charging voltage for cyclic use. So, this is the initial charge. So I'm just going to give it as much current as I can, as well, as much current as I want to take, at 15 volts for, I don't know, maybe an hour or so, we'll see what this current goes down to. So I've got them charging in parallel, so they should help balance the batteries as well to make sure they're both about equal. Oh, I've got the current limit set at 2 amps, it's already come down to like 0.6 as you can see. So it doesn't actually need that much, it's doing all right. Right, so I've had these batteries in charge for a while now, a um, couple of hours, I did start 15 volts until I've got like a bulk charge in there. And I dropped down to 13.8 volts for a while now, and it's not really dropping a lot, it's sort of hovering around this kind of value now. So I think I'm going to stop the charging there, I think that's going to be good enough. We'll recheck the internal resistance, see if that's changed. It may or may not have changed, I mean my experience before is that it has changed, um, especially on liquid lead acid batteries, they change by quite a bit. SLAs might be a little bit different, I know they change with um, degradation in age. We'll see if it's changed with a charge state change. Disconnect both of these, don't shorten together yet because I'm still connected to both batteries. Right, let's put these on, see what we get. So you've got 30 and a half volts in its idle state, but obviously it's going to drop as it settles after the charge cycle. Um, still 27 milliohms, which is interesting. Let's check the other battery out. And this is 27 milliohms as well. So, one's 27 directly, one's 27.3, we'll call it. I'll put those in as they are, and we'll see how we go. Um, obviously, time will tell. You have my on the top here, the date, and the internal resistance that I measured. So what I did whilst I was waiting for these batteries to arrive, I cleaned up the chassis a little bit here. I used some white vinegar, and it's basically poured it all over the inside in here to stop that corrosion and get rid of it. So you can see there, it's just a little bit brown, instead of having all that chalky corrosion. Um, so that's all gone, and also got someone here as well, just along the bottom, just to try and get rid of it. It's not perfect, but it's got rid of most of the corrosion. You know, just a little tip, white vinegar, be quite surprised. So it's good for getting rid of corrosion. I've left this all loose so I can move it around, and I'll just tighten it up again after. Like that. So we've got to put this front plate in first, and then we'll tighten it down. So I'll tighten it here, then I'll tighten the bottom screws up, and then that'll be that in place. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you do subscribe. See more videos like this, or or different, like actual proper repairs, electronic level, component level repairs, and things I do as well. Just in case you're not familiar. If it's your first time here, then I expect you don't really know what I do. I do all sorts of stuff. My bags, product reviews, electronic repairs, a bit of design sometimes as well, PCB stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel, become a patron too. Or potentially, actually, I've also recently um, added membership to YouTube. I've become eligible for membership, so I've added that on. So that's also an option. 
So let's just look at how these go. These cross over like that. I don't like that actually. But um, I think it's going to have to cross over regardless. But I think it's rubbing on that chassis, is it? I feel it's a bit rough with some rubbing. I mean, you've got to kind of cross over regardless anyway, I suppose. I'll shut the negative on first. Yeah, it's not particularly tight. It's, yeah, it can be better. Let's squeeze it up slightly. I'll just use these to give it a bit of a crimp up. This connection is not looking the best actually. I might have to stick some vinegar on this too. Top one looks alright. This one's looking a little bit dirty inside. See that? Yeah, I might stick some vinegar on that and kill that corrosion. I didn't notice that before. Wish I had. Would have saved me some time. Here's my little bottle of white vinegar. And we'll just pour some in. And leave it to sit for a while. Just fill that up. Leave it sitting in there. And hopefully it'll um, do its job. Get rid of that corrosion. So while I'm waiting for that to soak, I'm just going to put these other fittings on. Oh, mind you, this one's looking a bit bad too, actually. These could use a bit of a clean up as well. Mmm. Better do that too. Alright, so I've just been giving it a bit of a clean up this brush. Obviously I had the vinegar in already. And uh, I was going to be wiggle around with this just to scrape off anything that might be loose and get rid of any debris. And it's already looking a lot better. You can see that. There's no green crusty stuff now there. It's all gone. It's looking a little bit brown where it's taken off, but that's kind of normal because that's what the vinegar does. I mean, you compare that to the other ones, which is pretty much what it looked like. You know? Just still got vinegar soaking in them, but you can see there's a big difference between them. So it's looking reasonable. I'm actually tempted to chuck some flux on it as well and heat it up a little bit. Just have some flux eat away at it a little bit, that might help too. Because you need a good, good connection. So I'll just chuck some flux in that and heated it up and tried to use that to give it a bit of a clean as well. Then flushed out some IPA. We'll see how that goes. I mean, it's certainly looking a lot better than it was. Alright, so let's give these a bit of a clean up as well. So it's got the vinegar already in there. I'm just trying to tap it out and get it back out again. This one's actually looking quite bad. I'm actually thinking I might just take that sleeving off to get right into it. See, I've taken a bit of sleeving off. You can see the bits where the vinegar didn't get into because it's still green. So there's little spots where there's still green there. So I need to hit that with a little bit more vinegar. Get rid of those, I think. And um, then flux it. So the thing is, these ones are actually quite bad underneath that sleeving. I decided to pull this one off again and just strip this sleeving off and give this one a bit of a clean up. This was actually pretty much okay anyway, but I thought I'd give it a little bit more. Just to be sure, so I've got no doubt about how good it is. I'm just going to flux these up again as well. Or flux these ones up. I haven't done these ones yet. Heat those up. Hit them with flux. I've already done the vinegar on these and brushed them. The flux helps to get rid of any corrosion and helps to clean the surface up. So that's why I'm doing it. I'll use some IPA on those, clean those up, and it should be good. As I push the heat shrink on, let's just uh, let's heat this up. That's that done. Now we can put it back together. Let's hook up the centre ones here. I have closed these up slightly to make them a bit uh, tighter, because I always do tend to slacken off a little bit after a while, so I tend to always squeeze them up before I replace these kinds of fillings. So this will probably spark when I hook it up. It didn't, that's good, I suppose. All right, that's on there, that's on there. This should now work. And it should turn on. Okay, trust it, great. There we go. Excellent, working. Battery's 90% or so. It's not still fully charged yet, so. Once it's been sitting for a while, it will charge batteries right up and it'll be alright. So that's working, excellent. I can go and put the cover back on. This isn't a particularly hard repair, it's just something that needs to be done from time to time, or well, maintenance, but the corrosion on connectors is a bit of a pain. Could have done without that, but anyway, that's what happens.
time. Job done. Happy about that. So that's that little project finished. Um, well overdue, as always. <laughs> I have so many things to do. It's just incredible how many things I have to do. <sighs> Dozens of jobs. Anyway, we'll work through our, through them all and we'll get these videos done. You'll get to see what I play around with most of my time outside of work, of course. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video, if you found this interesting or helpful. Make sure you do that. And check out my other videos. I've got playlists as well at the end of other things I've prepared, like consumer electronics. Like I said, there's consumer electronics, so there'll be a playlist for that. Don't forget to check out my sponsors, which is PCBWay. They sponsor my stuff from time to time. And also, Patreon helps to pay my way. So if you're interested in becoming a supporter via Patreon, go and check out the links down below for Patreon. And also, I've recently obtained YouTube membership. So if you want to sponsor me through YouTube directly instead, um, you can do that. Um, although Patreon's probably better because you actually get more focused content for you if you're a supporter. You know, I put the videos up early, especially for that, and extra files and, and uploads and stuff I put on there too, like service manuals and things like that, if I've got them. Anything I'm working on, I'll chuck them on there as well. So it's extra information for the supporters. The YouTube membership side doesn't really have that kind of availability for uploading files like that, so it's a bit harder to maintain. So, yeah, if you really if you want to support me, best use Patreon. But memberships on YouTube is also fine if you want to just do it that way. It's, it suits me just fine too. Catch you later. I'll see you next one. Bye.